This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design print ready business cards using GIMP. So I'll go ahead and open up my document here to show you what I have. Uh, I'm going to be designing uh, a business card that is the US standard size which is 3.5 inches wide by two inches high and with a quarter inch bleed and I'm going to show you how to account for bleed lines uh, using GIMP. The bleed is the area that gets trimmed off after it's printed so the design has to extend all the way to the edges of the document but the important area has to be the important uh, elements have to be kept within the bleed line areas and you could actually add another uh, quarter inch area for the uh, the safe area. I'll show you how to set all of this up so I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. Uh, for the size, I'm going to set this to inches. Now the, the standard business card size is 3.5 3.5 inches wide by 2 inches high. But uh, the standard print shop wants you to have a quarter inch bleed on your document. So what, what, that, what that means is we add a quarter inch to each dimension. So this would really be 3.75 by 2.25. And I'm going to go to advanced options down here. And we're going to have to set the DPI as well. Now, usually print shops usually work with uh, about 300 or 350 DPI. I like to do 350 just to be safe because even if they do use 300, they can work with 350 as well. It's easier to scale down than it is to scale up. So I'm going to set this to X and Y resolution. Make sure they're both set to 350. And uh, after that will be set, go ahead and click OK. And we will have our new document. I'm just going to hold Control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. Uh, what we're going to have to do now is add our bleed lines. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer right here where it says create a new layer. Uh, I'm going to set the size of this layer. Let me set this to inches. The size of this layer is going to be the size of the actual document after it gets trimmed, after it gets printed and trimmed, which is 3.5, 3.5 by 2 inches. And we want to fill this in with white. And go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to grab the alignment tool, which is right here. I'm going to click on that layer that we just created so it's selected. And I'm going to set the relative to, set that to image, and then just center it up on the document on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And what we could do now is uh, let me just grab the move tool to get rid of those selections. <clears throat> I'm going to right click on that layer and go to alpha to selection. And now we can delete that layer because we no longer need it. Now we can go to image, guides, new guides from selection and that's going to put new guides at the 3.5 by 2 inch mark and everything outside of that will be cut off after it's printed. So let me go to select none so you can see this better. There is our bleed lines right there. Now we're going to have to create additional lines in, on the inside of those which is for the safe area. If you notice when you do, whenever you're designing something if you put like these elements too close to the edge there's a possibility that could be cut off by the printer because there is a slight margin of error when you're whenever a print shop cuts something after it's printed. So it's it's a good idea to just create a safe area to keep the contents in. So to do that, I'm going to create another new layer. This one Instead of making it the same size as the document, we're going to make it a quarter inch smaller on each dimension. So I'm going to set that to inches. 3.5 inches minus a quarter inch would be 3.25 inches. And then the height, instead of being 2 inches, it would be 1.75. Because again, we're subtracting a quarter inch from each dimension. Uh, and again, we want that set to white. Go ahead and click OK. I'm going to grab the alignment tool. I'm going to click on that layer just like we did previously. Center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. Right click that layer and go to alpha to selection and then go ahead and delete it. And then go to uh, image, guides, new guides from selection. And there is our safe area. So I'm going to go to select none. And there we have our setup for our 3.5 by 2 inch business card with a quarter inch bleed and at 350 dpi. So what you can do is you could actually go and save this as a template. Save it as a GIMP.xcf file so that whenever you want to design a business card moving forward, you can just start out with this template instead of having to go through those steps. In fact, I'll save this template myself and I'll put a link in the description if you case in case you'd like to download and save a copy of it yourself. So uh, what we're going to do now is start designing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add this headshot. 
I'm going to open up the headshot graphic here. This is just a standard stock photo I found online. Uh, you could use your own photo or your client's photo or uh, you could just, just use this photo if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing. I'm going to grab the uh, ellipse select tool and I'm just going to click and drag and hold control to create a perfectly round circle like that. And then I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag that circle to position it over the area that I want to grab right there. Uh, once we've done that, I'll right click that. Actually, no, I'll go to Edit, Copy. Then I'll come over back to our document and go to Edit, Paste As, New Layer. Now I'm going to grab the, uh, the Scale tool, click on the uh, newly pasted image here. You might want to bring the opacity down a little bit if you're using the older version of GIMP like I am. And I'm just going to scale this down. I'm going to hold control so it locks the proportions. Scale that down about that much. Go ahead and click scale to finalize that. Let me grab the move tool and just put this over here. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse like that. What I'm going to do is I just want to center that up on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to grab the alignment tool. Go ahead and click on that image to select it and then just center it up just like that. And now I'm going to create some text. And the text is going to be part of this design here where the letters kind of like run into each other and they're attached to this colored in area. So to do that, I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm going to choose a new color up here. The color I'm using is 00ACC1. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to click on the canvas and I'm going to write as just like a placeholder name. I'm going to write John Smith. I'm going to change the font to Montserrat Heavy. You could use any font you'd like. I recommend using a heavyweight bold font like I'm using here. Uh, I'm going to make the size of that bigger. So come up here, just hold that arrow up to increase the size. And I want those letters to run into each other like I mentioned previously. So I'm going to come over here, this bottom icon where it shows the letters next to each other and just decrease that just like that. And we could even make this a little bigger actually. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to grab the alignment tool, click on that text, and again, center that up on the horizontal axis like we did with the, uh, the headshot there. Now I'm just going to grab the uh, move tool. I'm just going to make sure I have this positioned right where I want it. I'm holding control to lock it onto its axis. I'm going to move this one over too. Maybe about that far. I'll move this one a little closer. Oops. Move this one a little closer like that. And what we're going to do now is just create that colored in area. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, we're going to use transparency for this one. Go ahead and click OK. And we want to move this one down two steps so it's just above the background there. And I'm going to grab the select tool and I'm just going to click and drag over the bottom half of this image until it's touching the bottom, until it's touching the bottom of that text right there. And I'll just go to edit, fill with foreground color. And then we can go to select none. And now we can go ahead and add some more text in here, like the, uh, like the job title, the position, and the contact information. So to do that, let me click on the top layer, grab the text tool. Let me flip the colors around so that I'm working with white text instead of that greenish blue. I'll go ahead and click on the canvas here. And for this, I'm just going to write uh, job title slash position. And we want different text for this one. So I'm going to choose... Um, Text Gyre Adventure Bold. I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, let me bring the size of that down. Any, any, really any font can work here. It's just a matter of personal preference. I tend to like these simple sans fonts. Let me increase the, uh, let me set that back to zero. And I could just decrease the size of that a little bit. Grab the Move tool and just position this right beneath the name there. And I'm going to duplicate that text. Create a du click the button that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. Grab the move tool, bring this, oops. Grab this and bring this over here. Go back to the text tool, click on that to select it and I'm just gonna bring the size down. This is gonna be like the, uh, the contact information down here. So I'm just gonna write in like a phone number, just like a, a placeholder text here, 555. I'll hit enter to go to the next line. Uh, we'll put the email address here. Oops. And I want to increase the spacing between those two lines. So I'll click on this icon up here and increase the arrow just like that. And grab the select tool. I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to create a duplicate of that layer. 
I mean, of that text item, and then just bring this over here. Oops, keep grabbing the wrong thing. I'm going to hold control so it locks it onto the horizontal axis so they're both in the same plane like that. And again, I'll go back to the text tool. Uh, I'm going to use here, uh, I guess, city, state, and then uh, company website.com. And you pretty much get the idea. We're just, gonna, we're just putting contact information in here. You could put whatever contact information you'd like. Now let me zoom out. Um, that should pretty much do it for the design. Everything else that we'd have to do next would be like little details like clicking and dragging the logo into GIMP, which is pretty simple, and using these icons as well. But I won't get into those uh, granular details. Otherwise, the video will be a little too long. But you, you should get the idea. It's pretty simple to go about finishing up the rest of this. Um, if you'd like to use these icons here, these are contact icons that I created. I'll put a link in the description to where you can download those and, well, and use them as well. Same thing with these social media icons. I have a, um, a bundle of, of, of all these icons. You could download and use them however you'd like. That's how you can go about creating print-ready business cards with GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.